Nigeria has given approval for airport security to bear arms. Saleh Dunoma, the managing director and CEO of the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria, joined us earlier to talk us through some of the recent events in Nigeria's aviation sector. Well, there are a lot of uh, activities going on in terms of uh, infrastructure development at the airports. Right now, um, if you have traveled recently to all the international airports, you'll see a new terminal building coming up in Lagos, in Abuja, in Potakot, and uh, in Inugu. Uh, this is all part of the program to address uh, uh, the growth in traffic as uh, uh, focused by IATA. Uh, government is doing that, but of course um, uh, we realize that uh, uh, government might not be able to handle all uh, the development that we require in order to handle the surge in traffic uh, that we expect in the next few years. So government has also um, uh, agreed to work with investors in order to provide the additional infrastructure that is required in this uh, in, in these airports. Uh, so uh, government has already engaged a transaction advisor. Uh, for the development of new terminals, new runway infrastructure, depending on the airport, what uh, kind of infra infrastructure that is required. So uh, the transaction advisor has uh, submitted an outline business case. We are waiting for them to develop a full business uh, uh, outline okay. so that uh, we can go to the market and ask investors to come and uh, make uh, proposals. Okay, you're confident that this time around we would see a good partnership between the government and private sector to help develop yeah with the these with the procedures put in place okay. with the procedures put in place we are going to have a very good deal with uh, investors okay let's talk about airport safety i know that there's some upgrades that's uh, that's ongoing at the moment tell us about that yeah the well uh, is a continuous exercise as far as safety and security is concerned uh, the authority on its uh, own uh, goes up around to look at uh, uh, any any infraction any gap anything so that we address it but also the regulator is on our, is uh, watching us and uh, they also they also conduct their inspections so what we do is uh, any for any new development uh, at the airport any infrastructure that you add at the airport you must uh, assess it in terms of safety and security and make sure that it complies with safety and security requirements so if you go to the airport you see that we are extending CCTV cameras for surveillance for new structures that have come up. We are looking at uh, how safe it is for people to move around in case of emergency. What do you need to do? How do people move around? So these assessments are continuous. If there is any change, because changes come in terms of either procedure or the way we do things. And once we change the procedure, or we change the process of handling passengers at the airport or even parking aircrafts, you must also look at the security and safety implications. So these changes are continuous and they are dynamic depending on what we are doing. Now in terms of overall safety standards, Nigeria currently you know, ranks high. Tell us how you've been able to achieve that. Uh, well, we were able to achieve that by adhering to uh, the audits conducted by the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority and also participation with the Airport Excellence in Safety a uh, program that was designed by uh, the, uh, the ACI, uh, Airport Council International. Uh, once we uh, sign up to that program and uh, we participate fully in that, that will help us address our safety issues. Uh, also, the regulator has uh, uh, regular inspection uh, on a monthly basis. They inspect the airport entirely and then they come back with a report. And they'll tell you these are some of the things that you are uh, falling behind in terms of safety, in terms of security, in terms of facilitation. So we need to address that. So it's a, it's a regular thing. It's always a continuous thing for us to address safety, security, and facilitation issues at the airport. Okay, now the meteorological office it, it has forecast a, a volatile, stormy, rainy season that we're going to go into quite soon. Mm -hmm. How are you preparing for that? Uh, well, uh, for us is to work with uh, the Met Office and, uh, of course, the airlines uh, to assist them in whatever situation uh, to make sure that uh, all our equipments at the airport are working optimally so that uh, our flight operations can be smooth. But the only thing is that, of course, uh, any airline operator or pilot must respect the weather. Once you advise uh, about the weather, it's uh, left for the pilot to take a decision based on the weather situation. So uh, for us in the industry, we have a lot of respect for weather. Okay. So that's why 
uh, we work together with the, the meteorological agency uh, to, to make sure that uh, we get their focus and the airlines uh, plan their trip based on the weather forecast. Speaking about the airlines, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, I mean, there's still a myriad of challenges that the, the, air, the domestic airlines uh, experience. Many times you talk about multiplicity of taxes uh, within the sector. What are your thoughts uh, on this and how and why we continue to see so many, so much uh, flight delays, cancellations, and, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm a frequent, frequent traveler myself, and these are some of the things that I experience, and every, we keep asking, when is this going to end? Well, there are so many issues that has to do with flight delays and cancellations. First of all, uh, 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 issues of weather, uh, issues of management, issues of planning, and issues also of infrastructure. All these uh, contribute to flight delays and weather issues. Uh, so we need careful planning. The airlines need to be carefully planned. And the other thing that has to do with management also is to make sure that do you have enough equipment for you to cover all the routes? In case you lose one equipment, there's a snag on one equipment, can you recover from that and quickly uh, carry out this flight? So these are some of the issues, and it requires a lot of planning. Would you uh, say that some of them are just biting of more than they can chew? Do you think that they're overwhelmed? Yes, yes. I think that that is the issue. So they need to plan properly and make sure that they have capacity to cover, to recover when they lose an equipment. When there's a fault on their equipment, they must be able to conduct th those flights, or else we'll continue to have uh, delay. So in a nutshell, we need to have a strong uh, based uh, domestic carrier to be able to plan all the routes, to be able to provide uh, additional equipment uh, for them to recover quickly when there is a snag on any equipment. And also on, on, on the other side, we need to have efficient equipment, very efficient equipment at the airport that will assist them to make sure that whenever they plan, they are planning with the right data and with the right information. Okay, finally, how close are we to having a national carrier? We are, we are very close to that because um, the transaction advisor, as at the last uh, uh, engagement that we had with them, uh, they, 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 they have finished the outline business case. Okay. So uh, with that, uh, we need to sit with them again to look at what uh, the outline business case is. They, they need to report to the Honorable Minister of Aviation on that. And um, after that, I think uh, we'll make a lot of progress. Uh, and uh, we know that uh, a lot of people are interested, that, that for sure I know, a lot of people are interested to invest in this national career. So it's just to develop the right documentation and then we'll be out there.